The following is a commercial program paid for by Heritage Agriculture. The opinions and views expressed belong to its sponsors and are not those of Nexstar Broadcasting, Inc., the station, or their affiliates or employees. Welcome to Arkansas Farm Talk, where we will look at issues that affect agriculture here in the natural state. Brought to you by Heritage Agriculture. Here's your host, Mike Linton. Welcome to Arkansas Farm Talk. I'm your host, Mike Linton. Today's guest is Mr. Cody Burkham, Executive Vice President of Arkansas Cattlemen Association. Cody, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here. Ooh, man, we got a bunch to talk about. I hope we can get it all in in 30 minutes. <laughs> well, well, we'll talk fast as we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, USDA has passed a bill, Coronavirus Food Assistance Program. It's a direct payment to livestock producers. Tell me what you know about it. Well, you know, Mike, this is the first time in, in history that uh, cattle producers have been uh, uh, able to have direct payments, and uh, which COVID-19 has been unprecedented for, so this calls for unprecedented solutions, right? And uh, so, like you said, USDA just put out uh, the CFAT program, and it is a two-part payment program, meaning that if you sold calves between January 15th and uh, April 15th, you will receive a certain amount of money per head. Depending on the weight. Depending on the of weight. The calf, right? Right, okay. exactly. So if it's less than 600 pounds, you're going to receive $102. If it was more than 600 pounds, you'll receive $139. Okay. And then, uh, of course, your slaughter cattle, which we don't really deal with here in Arkansas per se, uh, but your mature cattle, those, those maybe those slaughter cows or those slaughter bulls that go to the markets, you're going to receive $92 a head. Uh, for those. Okay. So that's the first part of the payment. The second part of the payment is just a per head payment uh, that just say, I, you know, I have a hundred head at home. Okay. Um, so if, if that's what I have between April 16th and May 14th, I'm going to receive $33 a head. Per head. Per head. Okay. Now that's cows, calves, bulls, uh, anything that you have on your place. Okay. So now, let, let me back up. Let me just yep. ask you a question. Sure. Okay. So for every head that I sold between January 15th and April 15th, depending on where they stand, if they're 600 pounds or more, 600 pounds or less, or slaughter cattle, then I'm going to receive that payment per head. That's correct. Like six, 600 pounds or less, I'm going to get $102 a head, right? That's correct, yes. Okay, yep. okay. All right, 600 pounds or more, $139 a head. That's right. Okay, and then, for every cow, every calf, every bull that we have left on the farm, mm -hmm. it's thirty-three dollars a head, right? That's that's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and and that's between April sixteenth and, and May fourteenth. Okay. So uh, so what they'll do is they'll take those two payments uh, and they'll add, they'll put those together, and okay. uh, you will receive eighty percent of of the total. Okay. You'll so, get eighty percent of that total amount. That's right? correct. Okay. That's correct. So just say, for example, say you were you qualified for ten thousand dollars, you'll actually receive eighty percent or eight thousand sure. dollars, you know, something like that. Uh, you know, we know know that USDA is working with a very limited, you know, there was about nine point five billion, nine point one something billion like that, uh, in the CARES Act when it passed. But when you go to spreading that across all of agriculture it, it really it sounds like it down. a big number till you start splitting it up. That's right, that's you know? right. Now, you can't, you can't register before May 26, correct? That's correct. That's the day that you can register and you have to contact your local FSA office. That's correct. Okay, so you need to yep. go through them. Nothing you can do online that you know of. Right? That's, no, no, at okay. this time you, you need to, uh, now you can, uh, USDA held a, uh, a conference call or a Zoom webinar here uh, um, last week and kind of showed what all, uh, paperwork and information that you would need to be able to apply. So certainly in, encourage our farmers to, before they contact FSA, uh, to check out uh, farmer.gov, I believe is the website, and it'll have a list of things that you can, uh, because you're gonna be required to, you know, prove that you have the cows that you say you have and yes. that you've sold what you said you've sold and, yes. and things like that. So, yeah, so like for instance, myself, I, you know, I sold a pot load in March in to Oklahoma City. So uh, I'll just have to take, I guess the, you know, the piece of paper that I have where it says I sold the cattle and what I sold them for. That's right. To the FSA to prove that. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I, your check stub from, from uh, the National Stockyards here in Oklahoma City okay. will, you know, will tell how many head and, and the average price and things like that. Okay. They'll want to see that just, you know, just to prove ownership and that you have yes. what you say you have. All right. Now, how are we going to prove what we've got on the farm? 
Uh, you can do that a number of different ways. Uh, USDA is telling us they'll accept a lot of different things, whether that be you know vet bills, feed bills, uh, just your just your general ledger for you know some of your farm accounts and things like that. Sure. There is a, a host of different ways that that they can uh, okay. that the, that you'll, they'll let you prove your ownership okay. of but, those. But animals. our local FS guy, FSA guys will know what we need to do. Right? That's absolutely right. That's, okay. They're being trained on that program right now. That way, whenever it opens up, they're ready to go okay. and uh, and help the producers of Arkansas. Okay. And President Trump, uh, he made in a statement that he hopes that from the time that you apply, that within a week, uh, we'll have some money because we really need to get some money in producers' pockets. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you know, Mike, from the association standpoint, we were kind of surprised that uh, the the president and the office of uh, management uh, and, and OMB worked it around to where most of the times when you work with the government, something like this will have to go through at least a 30 day comment period. Yeah. Uh, but OMB and, and president worked around to where they, they put it out and said, we're not going to do a 30 day comment sure. period. We know our producers are hurting. Well, we're going to get it to them. I think it, I think it makes a statement about the president understands how important this is. They understand Absolutely. how bad our ranchers are hurting and he's trying to do something about it. Absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. And our Congress is trying to do something about it. I mean, this Congress backed. A so. Absolutely, I mean, this was, this, like you said, this was Congress passed back here a couple, you know, a month or so ago yes. in the CARES Act. And yes. uh, USDA, I, I got tickled. I got a call here a while back and the gentleman said, Cody, does Congress, or you know, does the, do they usually take this long to put out a program? And I, I kind of laughed and I said, well, this is actually very fast for, you know, for them putting out a program. They've yeah. actually worked at a breakneck speed. So yeah. we appreciate that sense of urgency from the president. Well, you know, you and I have had a lot of conversations. You know, our row crop guys are subsidized and they need to be because that's what makes us the greatest country in the world. Our American, our Arkansas farmers and ranchers can produce enough food to feed the world. Okay. That's right. That's so right. It, uh, everybody would like to have a free and open market, but we both know that it can never be like that. So if, if, if we can't have it 100% free and open market, then it needs to be subsidized. And I, I think that the ranchers uh, deserve to be subsidized just like the row crop guys do. I'm not saying take anything away from the row crop guys. They need every dime they can get just to try to break even too. But also I think our Arkansas ranchers uh, deserve to be deserve to be funded too. Well, they, they definitely deserve, some, you know, help in times, you know, the tough times and, and uh, certainly so. Um, like I said, this is the first time in history we've, we've seen this from the yes. ranching perspective. And uh, so, you know, I'll be honest, we, we wish that on that $33 a head side things might, might have worked out a little higher. Um, Any but chance of that being a little higher? It, it's possible. There, there are, I know, uh, definitely uh, already some, um, uh, conversations going on in Washington where that it could yeah. be possible that we get another tranche yeah. or raise what we have. Hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back to Arkansas Farm Talk. Since 1921, we've been supporting rice farmers across America. These are the farmers who own our co-op, who prosper together, striving to do more for their communities, going deeper, working smarter, growing stronger. That's how we make good even better. That good comes from the time and toil they're passing down of a way of life that supports not only their families, but families all over the world. So the world can be served with great food. Riceland, united we grow. In good times and hard times, Arkansas Farm Bureau is there. We're always working. So our state's farmers and ranchers can continue to put food on store shelves and on your family's dinner table. We support training for medical care in rural communities and the industries that provide materials needed for critical supplies. Arkansas Farm Bureau, working every day to keep Arkansas strong. The Case IH sales event is going on now, making it a great time to get the equipment you need at a price you can afford. You'll find new Farmall, Maxim, and Puma Series tractors along with our complete line of hay tools, all at a special rate. But hurry, the sales event ends August 31st. Keeping farms running, construction moving, and towns maintained is essential. That's why Kubota is working to keep you working. Right now, get 0% financing and no payments for 90 days. Offer expires May 31st. Visit KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Kubota. Together we do more.
No matter how you buy ag equipment, Ag Direct can finance it. We're powered by farm credit, people who know agriculture. So along with options to purchase, lease, or refinance, Ag Direct offers attractive rates, helpful service, and ag-friendly terms. When you compare the price of iron, be sure to compare your cost of money. Ask for Ag Direct. Built for agriculture. Powered by farm credit. Make sure you're prepared for the busy planting season ahead with Great Plains planters and drills available at Heritage Agriculture. The Great Plains lineup of planters and drills including the 3P4025AH twin row and YP825 planters are accurate, dependable planting solutions ready to help you kick off your planting season. Heritage Agriculture, the seven locations to serve you. We're customer focused, customer driven, and we want your business. Welcome back to Arkansas Farm Talk. I'm with Cody Burkham, the Executive Vice President of Arkansas Cattlemen Association. Cody, we were, we were touching on the payments for the livestock yep. uh, producers. I want to ask you a quick question we get into some more stuff. There's a lot of stuff to cover here. Right. Why do you think there's such a price difference between uh, the prices paid for beef at the grocery store and the prices paid to the grower? Because it's not even close. Yeah, no, Mike, it is de it's definitely uh, some imbalance within our industry, certainly. And, uh, you know, I'll be the first to say I'm no economist, and um, they, they have a, a number of different reasons they give. Uh, some of them are certainly credible. Some of them I, I kind of shake my head and wonder about uh, just, just from my own opinion. The, it's, a, it's a good question, though. Well, we, don't, we, we don't know exactly why. I yeah. mean, but we, we know that there is certainly a bottleneck in our supply in, in, the, you know, in our industry at yes. the killing plants. And, of course, you and I both know that the vast majority of our meat is, con is uh, processed by four, four large packers. Yes, and, and they can't do it for free. That's right. I get that. That's they right. can't do it for free, but there is such a, it's not even close. Right. I mean, the price uh, difference is not even, I mean, it's not even, not even, believable really but, right but the price that people are paying for beef at the grocery store today versus what the rancher is the price he's getting per pound I right. mean it's it's ridiculous really it absolutely I mean it absolutely is uh, Mike no no doubt about it you know it, but if we take any silver lining it is that it's thrown some light that would yes. probably not have been thrown on it any other way than to for you know yeah. we don't don't want to see any kind of pandemic but no. This is it's pointed a lot on, on some things that need a, to be changed. You're exactly right. We don't want to see a pandemic. We don't want to see COVID-19. But, I mean, our, our ranchers are hurting. Right. They're hurting bad. Right. And, and uh, they deserve this, uh, this little bit of a, a help that they're going to get right. and some payment. They, they deserve that. But my deal is what's next? Mm -hmm. we, we, gotta, we can't do business the way we did it 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. We have to think about where we are today in today's economy, today's society. And then I think moving forward, we have to put laws in place to protect the ranchers because that's our food. Our food source, I'm just, I've said it a million times, our American farmers and ranchers are the greatest in the world. Absolutely. Especially our Arkansas, when Arkansas farmers and ranchers because of the weather, everything they have to go through. And that's our biggest export item is commodities. Right. You know, that's what separates us from the rest of the world. All the other major powers can do a lot of the things that we can do, but what they can't do is they don't have the food source, they don't have the free water. That, that's absolutely right. You bring up good points. You know, I've heard it uh, you know, said several times that, you know, uh, food issues, ag issues here in the United States, that's national security issues at it the is. end of the day. And uh, I think we, we have to make sure that our elected leaders are hearing that uh, yes. from, from, you know, I my association and, and the producers. Absolutely. I, I think they're hearing it Absolutely. Now. They're hearing it loud and clear, I believe. Uh, let me ask you a question. President sure. Trump made the statement he wanted to shut down all beef entering the U.S., which I'm 400%, uh, and that our growers produced enough to supply the U.S. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will ever happen? So I found, I, I heard the same comments whenever I was watching yesterday, and I found it somewhat interesting, and, and I believe, for clarity's sake, he said, he said cattle, you know, stop exporting uh, cattle. Yes. And so, don't know if he meant beef, don't know if he meant cattle. He but meant importing. He meant importing, importing. I, you know, importing. Yeah. importing. Um, the thing about, you know, if we're talking about live cattle, you know, we, we get live cattle from Canada and Mexico. Those yes. are, you know, our, yes. two, our two largest ones. 
with the USMCA just, just being signed into law, just going to take effect here in the next few weeks, uh, which is something you know that President Trump negotiated in, yes. in his administration. Yes. Are we going to stop beef imports into America? Well, I don't. I don't know. I mean, because I know. if you know, if you kind of you shut it completely down, then they may stop the exports. Right. And and that it's give and take. Absolutely. It's you know, give and take. we are. You know, um, the United States is a uh, a net positive for importing of of, of low grade beef, mm -hmm. but we are when we talk about exporting beef, we export a lot, a lot of high dollar, high value beef that brings back, uh, you know, value to our carcasses and, and to our product. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, trade is one of those very, very c intricate issues and, and emotions certainly run high when we go to talking about trade, that's oh, for absolutely. sure. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. It's back and forth. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Cody, you testified at the Capitol last week. Tell me what you testified about and tell me what's going on there. Yeah, so you know, one, another one of those silver linings that COVID has has pointed out for us and shown us is that, uh, you know, Arkansas producers are, or they have, they don't have the ability to market their product like they would like to. You know, we we don't have killing capacity here in Arkansas on a large scale to move our product through. So. Okay. We're seeing a lot of local uh, people interested in locally grown foods. And so that, you're, you're talking about. Your, the meeting where you testified it was about slaughter facilities? It was about state inspection. That's state inspection, okay, yes. that's what it was about. Yeah, it was about okay. state meat inspection, okay. and because uh, that's what we're hearing from our producers. They want to move their product directly to the consumer and cut out the middleman, as it were. Yeah. And we understand some producers can do that, some can't, but right now Arkansas does not have a state meat inspection program, and um, though we did back in the 80s. So what we're trying to figure out is how we can go about working around our regulations and, and things that we have here in Arkansas to get a state inspection program back up and running to where our producers can move their product directly from the farm to, to somebody that wants the good Arkansas raised beef. And, and it's a good, safe product. It's, it's well packaged, it's well taken care of. Everyone has to know that when it hits a grocery store, you know, hey, you're, you're good here. That's right. You know, absolutely. No, don't don't have a second thought about it. That's right. right. I mean, you know, uh, uh, consumer confidence in our product is key. I mean, absolutely vital to our industry, mm -hmm. and uh, so we want to make sure as we work these regulations that we see, you know, uh, proper labeling, proper food safety uh, issues, and uh, but we just feel like we can do that a little better uh, with a state state meat inspection yeah. program. What Cody? What is the state meat inspection program, and and really, what would it look like? So, well, you and know, I, I know we're really early talking about this. Yes, yes, absolutely, and that's a good point. You know, uh, we're we're you know a year down the road at least, at the very least, you know, from seeing kind of some kind of state meat uh, state meat inspection program. But what we envision is, you know, Arkansas has a lot of what we call custom processing facilities. Yes. And these are process facilities that for the majority of the year make a lot of their money uh, in a certain time period in the fall when the deer harvest is on. Okay, like the guys that harvest the, the deer and I mean, you know, stuff like that. Right, right? exactly. And okay. so what we would like to see is some state, uh, the state meat inspection come in. Of course, when we talk about state meat inspection, uh, you have to, you also, there's still federal regulations that yes. they have to be equal to, at least equal to is the way the language reads. Uh, but we would like to see those custom guys be able to maybe with some with some help, whether that be tax credits or maybe a grant program, get their facilities up to to these uh, inspected levels where they can do the do the work. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Cody Burkham, Arkansas Cattlemen Association. Morgan Linton with Heritage Agriculture's Deal of the Week. This week is the Orange Line package deal from Kubota. L2501 Kubota Loader Land Pride Cutter and Box Blade with an Orange Line Trailer. $19,999 cash price or as low as $259 a month. Zero down, 0% zero APR financing for 84 months. Payments not due for 90 days. We're customer focused, we're customer driven. We'll see you at Heritage Agriculture. No matter how you buy ag equipment, Ag Direct can finance it. We're powered by farm credit, people who know agriculture. So along with options to purchase, lease, or refinance, Ag Direct offers attractive rates, helpful service, and ag-friendly terms. When you compare the price of iron, be sure to compare your cost of money. Ask for Ag Direct. Built for agriculture. Powered by farm credit.
There's no better time than now to get a great deal on the Kubota BX Tractor. Mow, haul, dig, lift. With the number one selling subcompact tractor in the U.S. for over 10 years, you own the land. Now, make it yours. Get the Kubota BX2380 for payments as low as $99 a month now through June 30th. See us or go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. During these busy and challenging times, Crone wants you to know we've got your back. So we're offering you 90 days of deferred payments on select models of Crone mowers, tethers, rakes, and round balers. That's right, make no payments for 90 days. And you can choose from 0% financing options to get the new Crone equipment you need. Check out these low monthly payment examples on select models of new Crone equipment. A lot of land comes with a lot of work. The new Kubota MX series has a lot to offer, including the versatility to mow, move hay bales, grade roads, and clear brush and snow. An optional spacious cab to keep you comfortable in any conditions. A front end loader with excellent loader lift capacity. Since 1921, we've been supporting rice farmers across America. These are the farmers who own our co-op, who prosper together, striving to do more for their communities, going deeper, working smarter, growing stronger, that's how we make good even better. That good comes from the time and toil they're passing down of a way of life that supports not only their families, but families all over the world. So the world can be served with great food. Riceland, united we grow. Welcome back to Arkansas Farm Talk. I'm talking with Cody Burkham, Arkansas Cattlemen Association Executive Vice President. Cody, we were talking about a state meat inspection program. You testified at the Capitol last week. Right. We were just kind of talking about what that might look like. Let me ask you this, who would have oversight that you, you think, who would have oversight on a state meat inspection program? Well, in, in, our, uh, in our plans, the Arkansas Department uh, of Ag, or the Arkansas Ag Department, would have main oversight over a state meat inspection. That's the way it is in the okay. majority of Secretary states. Secretary Ward. Yes, Secretary okay. West and, Ward, and, yes. And, and, his, and, his, and his, uh, his, his group, yes, yes. sir. Okay. Uh, now, there would certainly be, uh, the Arkansas Department of Health would have a, would have a, a piece in that as well, you know, advisory role. And make for sure, safety. For, safe, for, for, for yes. food safety, uh, yes. like I say, which is very important. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously you have some environmental regulations that have to go along with these uh, processing facilities or that, that currently go along with them. So uh, ADEQ would probably have a, a slight advisory role in that as well. But sure. the main, the main uh, coming from the Arkansas Department of Ag. Why do you think we need a state meat inspection program? Or, or maybe not you personally, but why are they considering bringing back a state meat inspection program? Well, I mean, you know, like like I said earlier, it's it's for the producers to be able to move their product to finish finish calf instead of, you know, sending them to the market. Sending them to Oklahoma City. Send them to Oklahoma Don't City to or that. or you know directly to one of the larger packing houses. They can cut out that portion. Sure. You know, get their meat processed and sell it a steak or a pound of hamburger at a time. Yeah. And and we all, I mean, we obviously just got through talking about it. We see that's where there is money to you know to be yes. made. Um, so we just see this as opening up access to these producers that want to meet a, a local or regional demand for Arkansas beef or any beef. Yeah, because of the prices have skyrocketed in the grocery stores. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have hit me up. Yep. You know, but I, I don't have a place to, I've got them. I've got the steers, they're backgrounded, they're ready to go, but I don't have a place to take them. Well, that's a, yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, I, I had a, uh, a gentleman called me that said that for the for one of the USD inspected facilities that we do have in Arkansas, we only have three. For one of them that could take his beef, it was going to be like March 30th of 2021. Oh my goodness! Well, see, so, that's yeah. I mean, that's way too. We got to eat between now and then. <laughs> I hope so. I got to look at me. I mean, you know. So, hey, given the recent uh, disruptions in the supply chain yep. because of COVID-19, uh, uh, will state meat inspections alleviate the problem in the future? Do you think they would? Uh, I think they'll help. Now, I, you, we're never going to be insulated just simply because of the way that 
that agriculture and food is, is produced and processed in the United States. I mean, we have, what makes us so good is we have a very effective and efficient system. Uh, but we also see now that that system is, is subject to bottlenecks and it issues is. of its own. own. Yes. So uh, these state meat inspections would certainly help us um, in these times, but it's not a silver bullet, and, and we realize that. It's just simply another marketing tool for the yeah. producers that are interested in it. What's the difference between a state and a federal meat inspection, or is there any difference at all? There is a, there is a difference, not, not a huge one to be honest with you, Mike. The thing about it is, is we see state meat inspection as uh, something that can be a little more flexible. Uh, you know, it's, it's a whole lot easier, and when I say flexible, it's a whole lot easier for me to pick up the phone and call Secretary Westward directly than Secretary Sonny Perdue. And that's kind of the way we see it. Sure. You know, if, they're, if one of these processors has an issue of, with inspection or whatever, yeah. they, can, they can get help where they need it, they can get it fixed and back to processing beef, whereas if they're USDA inspected, there's no telling what kind of red tape they'll have to go through to sure. to get back to where they yeah, need to I'm be. I'm going to have Secretary Ward on the show. He's just so busy fighting COVID-19. Sure. We're both Northeast Arkansas boys. <laughs> you bet. He grew up in Lake City. I grew up in Truman. All right. Okay. Know? All right. So, uh, so I'm going to have Secretary Ward on here, there's, and there's just so much going on right now, of course. Um, what are the current regulations regarding meat inspection? Are there any at all right now in the state of Arkansas? So the important thing to remember about the, the meat inspection here in the state is it's all under the, the uh, purview of USDA right now, since we don't have a state meat inspection. Um, there's three different types of plants that you can have currently. Uh, you can have a, a custom meat plant, which is what we talked about with the deer, you yes. know, deer harvest, and they can sure. still harvest cattle and, and uh, pork and lamb and things like that. But if you took it, you have to pick it up, right? Just they think about all the hogs that have just been killed and buried. Right, yeah. That if we, had, if we had that option, some of that stuff could have took place. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it's so, such a waste. So the, the, the custom, you have the customs, you have, um, uh, right now in Arkansas, you either have customs or you have USDA inspected. And like I say, there's, there's three in the whole state that are USDA inspected. We just need more. Um, as far as, you know, what the difference between state and federal is, there's, there's some things that, um, a good example, under USDA rules for these processing plants, they have to, you have to have a paved uh, parking lot for your employees. Mm -hmm. Well, that's for two things. I mean, that is for employee convenience, but it's also to keep, you know, some uh, things cleaner around your building. Sure. With state inspection, you, could, you might could do away with yeah. a little bit of that. Cody, I wish we could have got to everything today because we have so much, but you know, you uh, uh, ranchers like myself, producers, they can reach out to the FSA office, they can reach out to your office, Absolutely. Arkansas Cattlemen Association. I'd like to thank you and all the Arkansas Cattlemen Association for everything you do to promote the ranchers in Arkansas. We'll see you next week right here on Arkansas Farm Talk. Thank you for watching Arkansas Farm Talk, brought to you by Heritage Agriculture and these fine sponsors.